Hey everybody, I'm Brent, and today's video is my recent cave dive at Madison Blue Spring. This is a state park in Madison County, Florida that's open for cave divers to come and explore. As we're jumping into the water, I did put a little map on the left hand side. Let me know what you think about that, whether it's distracting or you find it neat to know where we're at. So this time it's me and Dave, and what he's doing right here is making that primary tie off. If you're new to the channel, cave divers always have a continuous line back to the surface. One thing you can't see right here is actually the water flow though. The whole time we're diving in, this cave has a ton of water flow trying to push us back out. Entering the cavern zone, we make a left-hand turn and just off to the right, there's actually this huge silt pile. I don't really know why it's deposited there, but it's pretty neat looking. Continuing on a little further, we make it to the stop sign, which can also be a Grim Reaper sign. These serve as a purpose to let divers know they're leaving the cavern zone and entering the cave. It's also a good reminder for people that don't have the proper equipment and training that that's what they need to go further. After the stop sign, we're following the main line until we see the first opening into the cave. Dave's in the lead on this dive, so he'll be heading in first. He's also on a little bit larger back mount rebreather unit, so that gives me a good size reference for some of the places we'll be going into. Now, right when we enter the first section of the cave, I'm like, dude, this place is awesome looking. We get a little further in, not even that far, and I see the first jump, which is like this little hole in the floor, and I'm like, what the heck is this? So jumps are basically places you can go and explore off the main line, and I try to get in there to take a look. My helmet barely fits, and all I can really see is a catfish in there, but it's pretty small looking. I'm not sure who goes in there, but somebody definitely does. All right, as I'm moving on to catch up to Dave, one thing that's really cool about this place is that it's called karst, which is just limestone underneath the ground that gets dissolved away by rainwater. And that's how these caves come to exist in the first place, which is pretty awesome. In this section of the cave, it's really cool because the ceiling and the floor get a little lower. And I always love places like that in caves because I feel like when you're going through it, you're just flying. If I wasn't diving, I'd probably be super claustrophobic, but because you're diving and flying through it, it's a really neat feeling. At the end of this low section, me and Dave get to an area that opens up a little bit, and you can see a good example right here on the left where his fin kind of stirs up a little bit of sand. Now, we're not really worried about a silt out because it's sand, which settles quickly, plus it's a really high flow. So if we were to silt out an area in this cave, we could just grab the main line and work our way through it. So now that we're into that next room, it's really cool looking because you can actually see this like tunnel down at the bottom. And I get that feeling, which is like, what's next? What's around the next corner? And it's really hard to ignore that. So I was really excited to get on there and see it. As we got closer, I realized it's really like a tunnel that made a little bit of an S turn beforehand. And it's awesome because you can just look straight down at the end. And then of course I get the feeling, what's at the end of the tunnel so we work our way down to the end and then it opens up into another bigger room kind of like the previous one that looks like it has another set of tunnels down at the bottom now something to note here is that because this is the first time dave and i have ever been in this cave we don't want to just go really far we actually set a maximum distance for ourselves of about 600 feet now as cave divers you can call the dive anytime you want for any reason so you don't have to wait until that distance but that's just letting you know why we didn't go even further it's because we like to really just explore the whole cave on the way in speaking of 600 feet this actually ended up being the distance so unfortunately we didn't get to go check out the rest of the tunnels down there but we will be back to try it so right here i went ahead and let dave know that we hit the distance and we turned around to make our way back but I really wanna show you the footage of the way back. I speed it up and you really get the feeling of flying through the tunnels, it's awesome. Also, if you look up into the ceiling, you can see where the limestone is just dissolved away into these little tunnels that go up. We looked up into a couple of them. I don't know how far they go, but it's really cool looking. All right, at this point, we're headed back into the cavern zone and through that, back where we can see daylight. And what I love at the end of a cave dive is when you see that light coming through into the cavern zone. I always think it looks so pretty. This was an awesome dive and everything went really well. But if you want to see how a cave diver reacts when there is a problem, like an equipment failure, check out this video of Dave. He does a really good job of reacting to a rebreather failure while we're in a cave. 